Okay, awesome, awesome. How's your day been? How's your day been, everybody? I'm just checking all the comments. Let's make sure we are sharing the broadcast and making sure that we are sharing to all the groups that we belong to. Um, let's get ready to receive the word of God this evening. Hallelujah. Where are you tuning in from? Let's share the broadcast. I'm going to start in a minute, right in a minute. We're just waiting to catch up with everybody. Let me make sure that everybody on um, our WhatsApp group as well knows that we are live. We have had a few challenges yesterday. Uh, there was a few technical challenges due to the load shedding, but we are back and live. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, awesome. I believe that everybody is on here again. As I explained that yesterday we had some difficulties. We had some technical difficulties, so we could not stream our service last uh, yesterday, rather, yesterday morning. But I promised everybody that I will make sure that even if I have to redo the teaching so that everybody can also catch up, I would do so. But nevertheless, it is a continuation of where we left off last week with a bit of new things, not even a bit, but a bit more. So uh, get your journals out, get your pens out, get your Bibles out. We are going to go into the reading of the word and we are going to um, exegete the word a bit and we are going to do our normal prayers. And hopefully I get all that done within 30 minutes because tomorrow I want us to start declaring as we step into the month of March which is my birthday month, and I'm actually quite excited. Those of you who have not uh, been following where we started last week, on Thursday I started a series where I was talking about open doors, and we started looking at why certain doors open and why certain doors close. We started looking at what the Word of God says about open doors and closed doors and what you can do to access the next door in your life. Hallelujah how you can go through your waiting process uh, while you are going through your door. Just a quick recap, um, we also looked at specifically what are the things that open doors in our lives. And we looked at the word of God and the praising of God. We looked at the book, our anchor scripture was Revelation chapter 3 verses 7 to 8 where God explains and says that by virtue of you having kept the word, even in moments when you seem weak and you don't have the strength to carry on and go to the next level. God is there to take you to the next level by virtue of you having kept the word of God. So we, we went deeper into looking at what is the word of God that needs to be kept. And yesterday uh, in the morning, I started talking about the revealed word of God. And I, I started talking about four dimensions of the word of God that we needed to look at. And that's where I'm going to uh, just go a little bit deeper into so that you can understand um, what is that part of the word and how do you unlock that, that, that word part and how do you use those keys? Hallelujah. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper also in explaining what doors are and how to access doors and why doors are there. And, and we're going to look at also, uh, why certain doors are closed. So last week we looked at different, uh, situations in the Bible. We looked at the, at the situation of Joseph, what he went through in prison and how he was released, uh, from prison. Um, and, and, and by the word of God. So by a word of God that came, that ensured that he was released, that was um, in uh, the book of Psalms chapter 105. And we also looked at how uh, the door of liberty was unlocked, for example, for Israel, where it was kept in a, a, um, captivity by Babylon for a period of 70 years. And the prophet Daniel had to unlock that door, uh, you know, by, by looking at what the word of God said about Israel's situation. And we looked at Jeremiah 29 verse 10, where the Bible actually went into, uh, you know, or, or Jeremiah actually says that, you know, um, you know, it, they were only supposed to be in captivity for a period of, of, of 70 years. Therefore, their time in captivity had expired. Hallelujah. We also looked at the situation of Jesus' um, ministry, how it came into manifestation and how it came into fulfillment. We looked at the scriptures where 
Jesus actually affirmed and, and spoke of, of why he was called and why he came, how he came to set the, those who are captives to be liberated, how he came to mend those who are brokenhearted, how he came to heal those who are bruised. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. We began then to see that when the revelation of the word comes into your spirit, you then step into your manifestation by virtue of that word. Hallelujah. Whenever the revelation of who you are, of your purpose, of your destiny, of the word, then you step into the manifestation of that thing that has been revealed to you. We then started talking about the fact that you need to understand that until the revealed word of God comes into your life, you cannot have that spotlight and focus attention. Hallelujah. So you need to understand who you are in the word of God, who you are in this world, where you belong, whose you are, so that you can shine forth the light that you are. Amen, somebody. So we begin to understand that our lives are a living epistle, that we ourselves, we are a written living epistle that is supposed to show off the glory of God. We are not supposed to be living in a state of Ichabod, which is when the glory has departed parted but god is expecting that we will always show forth the glory let me fast track this so that we can get for, uh, uh, forward with the with the new word today so we also looked at how doors of frustration get closed and how doors of satisfaction get opened we looked at the situation of peter in the book of luke chapter 5 and in the book of luke chapter 5 we saw that the obedience to the instruction that jesus brought and said look if you follow me and you follow my instruction you unlock the door of blessings that are uncountable. Hallelujah, somebody. And then we looked at how this word then begins to open the doors that we have. We now understand that the doors that we have, they unlock certain things. They open diverse opportunities for us. Hallelujah. As people of God, the spiritual keys that we have open diverse doors for us. Hallelujah. And we need to understand what those diverse doors for somebody who is in need of healing. They unlock the dimension of healing by locating the word of healing that speaks to their situation. So there's always a situational word for whatever you are going through or wherever you want to get to. Amen, somebody. And we also saw in the word that the word of God is the same as God. So there is nothing that gets made or created without the word of God because God is our creator. And he says, I made you in my likeness and image. He speaks of the word of God. He says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. And the word was with God. And nothing was made that was made that was not with him. That is John 1, 33, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And we begin to see, we began to look at Genesis chapter 1, that in the beginning when God was creating earth, he spoke, he made a he, he made a sound, he said something. When you go through the book of Genesis chapter 1, it keeps on saying, saying, God said, God said, God said. So until you speak, until you articulate what you want to create, nothing gets done. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so now you begin to understand when you look at the scriptures, when you look at the book of John chapter 1, especially when you move to the first book of Samuel chapter 3 verse 21, there's a word here that says the presence of God is tied to, you know, it, it, or, or rather let me paraphrase it like this. Um, you know, the word came to Samuel and when the word came, the presence of God followed. When, when God appeared to Samuel, it was through what? It was through the word. Hallelujah. So you begin to understand that whenever the word of God is present, the presence of God of necessity has to come. And when the presence of God appears, therefore any obstacle that you are facing has to disappear. I said something powerful there. So whenever you activate the word of God, the presence of God has to appear. And when the presence of God is there, then of necessity, your obstacles must disappear. Hallelujah. It then brings you to a situation where you understand what he means when he says, I am the light of the world. I am the light. I am the door for the sheep as well. So whenever light comes, darkness has to go. Hallelujah. Which was the third point that we looked at how the word of God unlocks these doors. This is where you understand that when the word of God comes, it comes in as a light. And the Bible says, 
And when the light appeared, darkness could not comprehend it. This is uh, John 1 verse 5 and Psalm 119 verses 105. He says that darkness could not comprehend the light. The darkness cannot appropriate. Darkness cannot consume the light. So it cannot destroy. The, then you begin to understand that as a child of God who bears the light of God, there is no way you can be written off. There is no way that you can be eradicated. There is no way that your light cannot be switched, can be switched off. Hallelujah. Then you begin to understand the scriptures when they take you to the word that says that your light cannot be put under a bushel. You are meant for a high mountaintop life. Talk to me, somebody. TikTok, are you tracking with me? Facebook, are you tracking with me? The Bible says that you are a city set upon a hill whose light cannot be put under a bushel. You are a city set upon a hill. And yesterday I said to the saints in church that do not allow yourself to be made a secret. Do not allow yourself to be made a non-entity. Do not allow yourself, if, you know, if I, I, the example that I even made is like, if you are somebody who is maybe in a relationship and somebody wants to keep you a secret and cannot even hold hands with you in public, that should send alarm bells to you to ask, is this the right person? Is this the person that is meant to, to spend destiny with me? Is this somebody who can, who can anchor me? Hallelujah. Some people are dating people who are married and they are kept a secret. You are not meant to be a secret. Somebody wants to be, to be announced to the world. You are meant to, for, to be a headliner. You are meant to be in the news reports for good things. You are meant to be to, to be known for good things. That is why we started talking about yesterday evening in church that you must desire to have a good name. We're going to check on those scriptures where we're going to look at the example of Abraham as well. Hallelujah. So lastly, we also looked at the fact that the word of God opens the door to the works of God, right? To the door, it, it opens the door to the works of God. And that's when we went to look at Psalm 33 verse 4, hallelujah, and Genesis 1 verse 3, hallelujah. So whenever you look at the works of God, anytime God did any work, any project, it, it, it was through what? It was through the word of God. Hallelujah. You begin to unlock the word of possibilities because you serve a God of possibilities. Then we now tracked. Hallelujah. This is where we left off on, I think it was on Friday or Saturday. Hallelujah. We wanted to look at what is that word that opens doors. And number one, the revealed word is what will unlock the doors. Hallelujah. We looked at the book of Matthew chapter 16, verses 16 to 19. If you can track there with me very quickly, let me find my scriptures quickly. Matthew chapter 16, verses 16 to 19. I'm going to paraphrase a lot of scriptures today because I want to track and, 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 and cover a lot of things. But Matthew 16 speaks of a situation where Peter is asked by Christ. Christ says, who do men say I am? And who do you, who you say I am? And Peter answers Jesus. He says, he says, uh, uh, you know, um, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, you are the one we've been waiting for, you are the Jesus that we have been waiting for, you are our Savior, you are our Christ. Then Jesus says that flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, hallelujah, but my Father in heaven is the only one that could have given you revelatory knowledge of this day, hallelujah. So he begins to see, and then he says that it is upon this rock that I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So you begin to now understand when Jesus says you are the rock upon which I will build my church. He's saying you are the revelation. Upon this revelation that you have, it is what I will build my church. So I will improve your life. Those of you who are listening to me, now you need to position yourself and know, understand where to slot yourself in in the word of God. He says, I will build whatever you are building. I will grow whatever you are growing. I will make sure you are a success based on your revelation knowledge of who I am. I am. And you can only get that if you are intimate and you have a relationship with me. If you understand that I am the Christ, the anointed one who brings the oil, the anointing that you need to unlock what you need. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. So while you're studying the Bible, while you're studying the word of God, the word of God gets revealed to you. Hallelujah. You begin to understand that he has come to give you access. Hallelujah. You can ask God for his word. So you can ask God and say, God, give me a revelation of who you are. Hallelujah. This you find in Psalm 119 verse 18. You can ask God. So how do you access this word that opens the doors? 
ask God for his revelation word. Number two, how do you access this word? Number two, you access it through the sent word of God. The word that is sent, Psalm 105 verses 17 to 19. Hallelujah. Let me read this before I continue. The book of Luke chapter 11, 52. Sorry, we're going to go to Psalm 105 just now, but Luke chapter 11, verse 52 says, woe to you lawyers, because you have taken away the key to the knowledge. You, when he was speaking to their lawyers here, he's speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the synagogue. He says, you have taken away the knowledge, the scriptural truth, you yourselves did not enter and you held back those who were entering by your flawed interpretation of God's word and your man-made tradition. So he, he begins to rebuke. He says, you people who are supposed to be teachers of the word, who are supposed to be unlocking these truths and these, 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 this dimension to people, to my people, you have kept the knowledge and the truth from them. You yourself did not appropriate this word. You did not enter into the dimension that it was supposed to unlock. Now you have kept away some of the people because of your man-made doctrines. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now we begin to understand that God has done his part to make sure that he sent his word. But the word did not arrive. Hallelujah. The word did not arrive. But why? Psalm 105, verse 17 to 19, he says, he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. He, he, his feet they hurt with shekels. He was put in chains of iron until the time that his word of prophecy regarding his brothers came true. The word of the Lord tested and refined him. The word would not have reached Simon if it was not sent. Hallelujah. Then Psalm 107, verse 20 says, he sent his word and healed them and he rescued them from their destruction. Hallelujah. So until the word of healing is sent and received, you cannot be healed from your destruction. Hallelujah. Are you tracking with me? Are you beginning to understand how this truth connects to each other? He sent his word and healed them and rescued them from their destruction. So when the word of God comes in, it heals you. It will rescue you from your destruction. Somebody who's listening to the sound of my voice today, you are being healed from your destruction, whether by self-destruction or whatever kind of, of wherever it's coming from, you are healed because you are receiving what number two, the sent word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 5 verse 4 to 6, he says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out, okay, I'm not going to go into that one. Sorry, my scriptures are a bit, hallelujah. But let me go on to the third point. The third point is this, that how do you access this word? This word, you access it by the kept word. And this was the anchor from the Revelations chapter 3. It talks about the kept word, the word that is residing in you. And the example that I made yesterday was that if you are a citizen of a particular country, you can be a citizen of South Africa, but reside in Zimbabwe. You can be residing in America. Hallelujah. But when you are there, whatever is in America is inside of you. The air that you breathe is inside of you. When you are in South Africa, you are residing here. It is inside of you. This has nothing to do with citizenship. It has to do with a residency. So there must be a point that you get to where the word of God resides inside of you. It must be inside of you. Hallelujah. It must flow from your belly. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water that you need to send anywhere that you require. Hallelujah. So the kept word of God, if you keep it in your custody, it is a resident revelation. The word that will help you to think and act and live in a glorified state. Hallelujah. So the word is made resident by your continuous reviewing, by your continuous meditation of the word of God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. Listen to this. Romans 12 verse 1 to 2 says, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters by the mercies of God to present your bodies, dedicating yourself and setting yourself apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its super values and customs, but to be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on the godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove yourself to yourself what the will of God is 
and what is that thing that is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you? Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. That is the kept word that will help you go into the proof status. That will give you the evidence that you need. You don't need somebody to even come and bear witness for you, but you have that resident word inside of you. Number four, how do you access this word and what is this word? You access the word that is declared, the declared word of God. This is Isaiah chapter 43 verses 26. Isaiah 43 26. It says, remind me of your merits with a thorough report. Let us plead and argue our case together. State your position so that you may be proved right. Remind me. Remind me. So you ask God to, to, to come into remembrance. You declare his word and you tell him, God, you said in your word, I'm a winner. You said in your word, I'm more than a conqueror. You said in your word that I'm blessed. You said in your word that it doesn't matter where I am, whether I'm in the city, whether I'm in the village, whatever country I'm in, you said I am blessed. You said you load me daily with benefits. I am coming to you, God, today to remind you that you said you will load me daily with benefits. You said to me I'm the head, I'm, I'm not the tail. You said to me everything that I put my hands to shall be a success. You said to me I can walk in divine health. You said to me if I continually meditate on your word and not associate with any riffraff, God, you will Will, you will cause that you know my life to shine you said your lamp your, your, your word is a lamp unto my feet therefore God I'm not supposed to be confused I'm supposed to have a path that is lighted up you need to remember my remind God call him into remembrance declare his word back to him because he cannot not come through for you when you declare his word somebody shout amen hallelujah hallelujah somebody so we want to declare the word of God Whenever the situation, what, you know, the best time to declare the word is when the word look, the, 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 the situation looks contrary to whatever you are going through. Whenever it looks even worse, whenever you have declared it as many times, you continue to declare it. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. So you give thanks to him. You give thanks to him. No matter how long you've been waiting, no matter how long the season has been. You give thanksgiving. That will unlock opportunities and doors. Hallelujah. You give honor to God, no matter how it looks. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. You thank him. You say, Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. You are the doer of all wondrous, wondrous things, wonderful things that I experience. I'm yet to experience even more wonderful things in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, somebody. Every prophetic word that has been spoken over my life, thank you, Lord, that it is coming to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. I place a demand with faith and understanding. I'm placing a word. I'm placing a demand. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. So this year, make up in your mind that I'm going to be good. I'm going to be great. I'm going to... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make a decision to love God like never before. Don't be a fake Christian. Don't be a half and half Christian. Make up your mind to love God, number one. Make up your mind to love God. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, it says, however as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. I, I think I want to teach this so that it lands, so that you understand when we transition. Hallelujah. When, when you are a Christian that loves God for real, the Bible says you have not seen, you have not heard what the Lord has prepared. Not even people around you will comprehend and understand when God opens that door for you. Hallelujah. And this year, the second thing I want to ask you, be committed to a lifestyle of prayer. I thank God for those who are tuned in right now because every time you are tuning in, every, do you think other people are doing what you're doing now? Some are sleeping. Some are eating ice cream. Some, some are doing all sorts of weird things, but they're expecting their lives to change. Meanwhile, God says, meditate upon my word. Hallelujah. So make up your mind to have a committed life of prayer. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 says, Now Jesus was telling the, the disciples a parable to make the point that at all times they ought to pray and not give up and lose heart. Don't faint. 
It is not, not time. Tell your neighbor, do not faint. Don't lose heart. It is not time to give up. You ought to pray at all times, in good times, bad times, mediocre, whatever middle ground time, you have to pray. James 5 verse 13, he says, is there anyone among you who is suffering? He must pray. Is anyone joyful? He must give praises to God. So if you are suffering, it is not time to cry. Hallelujah. Cry and wipe your eyes. If you are in a denial situation, move out of the denial situation. At some point, we have to stop mourning. At some point, we have to rise up, wipe our eyes, dust ourselves, and get into the ring again to fight again and say, I still have a fight inside of me. Amen, somebody. Mark 13, 24 says, but in those days, after the suffering and distress of that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. But look at the answer in Acts chapter 6, verse 44. It says, but we will continue to devote ourselves steadfastly to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Whether it gets dark, baby girl, whether it gets dark, men of God, devote yourself and steadfastly on that prayer. A lifestyle of prayer will unlock doors for you. Do not lose heart. Type it in the comment section. Do not lose heart. Acts chapter 20 verse 32 says, Now I commend you to God, placing you under the protective care of God. When he says, when the apostle says, I am commending you to God. He says, I'm putting you in the protective custody of God. I'm putting you into the loving care of God. And I commend you to the word. I am putting you into the care of the word. Because the word is a better insurance. It's better than sun lamb, baby. It's better than holide, baby. It's better than eh, 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 wh what you call this thing outsurance you it is good you are placed in the protective custody hallelujah hallelujah somebody hallelujah you are placed in the word of his grace ah i could just scream when i read x chapter 20 verse 32 it says i am putting you into the word of god i am putting you into the insurance of his grace I am guaranteeing you that you will be in the council and in the pro you will walk in the promises of his unmerited favor. Are you tracking with me? You are put in the protective favor, in his grace, in his word, because that word will unlock the door of grace. That word will unlock the door of protection that you need. That's why some find themselves in accidents where other people have died and they say, I don't know how I came out of this, but I came out of it because now I'm moving with the insurance that is Jesus. I'm moving with the insurance that is the word of God. Hallelujah. I put you in the protective custody of the promises of God. Everything can pass away, but the promises of God will stand. His grace is able to build you up and to give you your rightful inheritance amongst all those who are sanctified. It is able to give you the rightful inheritance. There is a sad reality when you don't know that your name is in a will, a testament. If somebody dies and leaves a will and leaves a house or a mansion for you or a car, an Aston Martin, you will not know until you know that your name is in the will. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that people who don't know what is their rightful inheritance, they are under the tutelage of governors and, and, and tutors. Hallelujah because they don't know what is rightfully theirs. So therefore they are pulled, their nose are pulled left, right and center and told what they, they can do and not do because they don't know they have access to, to controlling those things themselves. And he says, I commend you to God, to his grace that is able to build you up and give you your rightful inheritance among all those who are sanctified. That is amongst those who are set apart for God's purpose and all believers. That is why sometimes you are shocked that there are some believers who are seemingly trekking faster than where you are. You don't understand why am I not moving? It is time for you to wake up, child of God. You cannot say, but we go to the same church. Why am I not doing the testament? You are the one that needs to shake yourself up by by, by prayer. Hallelujah. Love God, number one. Number two, be a prayerful Christian. Number two, you need to also 
soak yourself in the word of God. Hallelujah. John 1, 3, says, all things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made that came into being. Hallelujah. And also, he, you, you need to understand that in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, he says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is by exhorting one another. And so much more as you see the day approaching. So, we're looking at the day as it is approaching, but people have forsaken the fellowship of others. The fellowship with other brethren. It's an instruction. Now we have people who are saying, it's okay, Mina, I'm okay with online. I will just do God online. I'm, I'm fine. I will do God by myself. It's awesome. But there are certain blessings and certain things, certain revelations that are brought about in a corporate setting, a corporate setting like this, where you are fellowshipping with other believers. I'm grateful. I'm glad that you can read your Bible in your bedroom to, uh, on all by yourself. But the Bible says, do not forsake the fellowship with other believers. As the manner of some is, there are people after COVID, they even forgot they got churches. There are people who were misled to say you don't need instructors. Why would God create pastors and teachers of the word for you to just sit in your room alone? Who is teaching you? I know the amen will go less now. Do not forsake the fellowship with other believers. Do not forsake your service in the house, house of God. Because your service will speak for you. Your service might be the one that is speaking for your children in the next generations. Some of us, it is the service of our parents that is speaking for us. If you don't want to say amen, say ouch. Hallelujah. Psalm 133 verse 1 to 3 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil of consecration poured on the head, coming down from the beards of Aaron, coming down upon the edge of his priestly robes. It is like the dew of the Mount Hermon, coming down on the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing life forevermore. So there is a point where God commands a blessing to flow from the beard of Aaron. The, the, it flows from the top. There is an oil that flows from the people that God has put before you as, 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 as those who are your leaders. But no, we have grown wings. We, 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 we now say, no, 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 I don't need a pastor in my life. I don't need somebody to speak into my life. But there's an oil. I'm not saying doors will not open for you, child of God. I know some of you have been hurt. I know some of you say, but Pastor Fortune, you don't understand what I've gone through, where I was ever fellowship. Wherever you, if you can find another place where you can get that in. There's an oil. There's a door. There's a door. What if that door is there? Let me move on. Acts chapter 2 verse 42 to 43 says they were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostles and to the fellowship, to eating meals together and to prayers. Did you hear that? It's not me, it's the word of God. Verse 42 says they devoted themselves to the instruction of the apostles. A sense of awe was felt everyone and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. So there are signs and wonders that are set apart for where the operation of the apostle is. Hallelujah. Then number three, how do you unlock these doors again? To you must make a determination that you are going to make a notable progress this year. Make a determination that I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to make an impact. I'm going to live a serious legacy. I'm going to make an impact. Don't just Come in into this world with a birth certificate and live with a death certificate. Leave something in between so that we can read about you. Exodus chapter 14 verses 14 to 15, it says, The Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the sons of Israel to move forward to, towards the Red Sea. You find in, in the book of Exodus chapter 14, the story is told of how the children of Israel were just getting edgy and anxious and they were like oh my god we're looking at behind pharaoh is chasing us and the red sea is here where do we go then moses goes to god and say god i don't know i'm confused they're confused they don't know whether they are going forward or they're going sideways god says why are you coming to cry to me when i've already given you this, the keys to equip you to un unlock the door there is a door here in this red sea that you are looking at it's not closed it, the red sea 
is the door. He says that's how the, the Red Sea parted. The Bible doesn't say that they, they, they swam across the sea with the boat. It says the Red Sea parted. It literally separated into a dry ground situation where they literally moved inside the Red Sea. So I don't know what your Red Sea is that you are facing or what you are running from. You are running from Pharaoh. You are faced with the Red Sea. Don't go back and cry to God. Unlock that door. Unlock the Red Sea. Tell the Red Sea to part. That Red Sea must part. Hallelujah, somebody. Proverbs 4, 4 verse 18 says, The path of the righteous is like the, morn is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. You are the righteousness of God. Your path is supposed to shine brighter and brighter. We don't have time. We don't have room. This year, 2023, I want you to say it right now. In this year, 2023, I do not have time to argue with darkness. I do not have time to argue with anything that will make me slow. I am commanding every red sea before me to part so that I can go through. He says, go through. Go forward. Type that in your comment section. I want to see how many people are still alive and awake with me. Type it in the comment section. I am going forward. I want you to declare it and decree it. I am going forward. I am going forward. Hallelujah. Then number four, lastly, you need to make sure that you are a blessing to somebody. This year, stop being so stingy. Be a blessing to somebody. There is somebody who has been talking into your life. There is somebody who has been interceding for you. Be a blessing. Be a blessing to strangers. Don't just cook for yourself. Take food to somebody, even if you don't have. You, even if you say, I've just budgeted for 30 days, Pastor, it's enough for me and my family. Take something. Give something to somebody. Make it a habit in your life to be a blessing. God reminded us to that we must also look the poor you will always have amongst you and you must look after them. Don't be selfish. Hallelujah, somebody. Don't be selfish. Genesis 12 verse 3, he says, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He's talking to Abraham. He says, In thee all the families of the earth shall be blessed. He was talking to a man who did not have a child. But he see, he's saying, in the other families of the earth shall be blessed. Ask yourself, who have you been? Why must you be the one who's saying, every time you are talking to people, you want, can you bless me? A, a brother, sister, can you bless me? Why are you always asking for blessings? Be the one who's also blessing others. Don't be a river that is stagnant. Stagnant waters begin to smell. Amen, somebody. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 says, Those who are spiritually wise will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead many to righteousness will be will shining like stars forever and ever. If you lead others to righteousness, you lead people to God, they see the example of God inside of you, you will shine brighter and brighter. Genesis 12 verse 1 to 3, this is the example of, of Abraham's journey to Egypt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, go to the land in which I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you abundantly and make your name great. I will exalt your name. I will make you a distinguished person. God is talking about you. He says, if you follow my instruction and you do my word, I will unlock doors of distinguishment. I will unlock uh, doors of exaltation. I will take you to new levels where people will know. People will know that you created a legacy. You changed something in this life. Hallelujah, somebody. I hope I'm communicating. Thank you so much, TikTok. You, you, you guys are giving me encouragement. Uh, I'm checking whether Facebook will track faster. Hallelujah. Be a source of greatness and good to other people. He says, I will bless you. I will do good for you. I will bring benefits for you. I will bring benefits to those who bless you. When you bless others, you will in turn be blessed. Be the kind of person that somebody wakes up in the middle of the night, prays for you. Hey, you know, you know, there are some people who know, say, you know, if this person can die, I will suffer. Is there somebody like that in your life that you know that ish, if this person is not no longer around, I wonder how my life will turn out. So that is the person you need to wake up and pray for. That person has been a blessing in your life. You know that you've not had a job for a year or two, but that person has been dashing you, has been helping you. You have been eating. You don't know how the money came. Be a blessing and pray for those people. Hallelujah. And I will curse those that will curse you. Those who are plotting against you. God's got your back. He says, I will cover you on that. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Are we tracking together? So we begin to understand that we move into a mystery of open doors. Greek, give me a bit, 10 minutes. Don't go anywhere. Just give me 10 minutes so that I close this off properly. Hallelujah. So the open doors are a mystery. Matthew 7 verse 8, uh, verse 8, 7 to 8 says, ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and it will, you know, seek and you will find. Ask. Open up your mouth and ask. Don't think about it. Don't wish on it. Ask. It shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives. And he that seeks finds. To him that knocketh it shall be open. Hallelujah. If you knock it will open. There is no door that will not be open if you knock long enough on it. Knock. So now we begin to understand that when we believe the word of God, when we receive the word of God, when we engage with the word of God, we mix our faith into it. It must produce an open door. I believe it. I receive it. I engage it. I open the door. Type it in that comment section. I hope you caught me. I said, believe it, receive it, engage it. Believe it, receive it, engage it. Believe it, receive it, engage it. Luke chapter 1 verse 45, he says, Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told to her from the Lord. If you believe in that which God has told you, there shall be a performance, there shall be an execution of what you have been told by God. Mark 11 verse 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things that you... Uh, uh, you desire when you pray, when you pray, not when you think about them, when you pray about them, when you believe them, when you receive them, you shall have them. When you believe them, when you pray about them, when you receive them, you will have them. Hebrews 4 verse 2 says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith, those that heard it. So there are people that may be sitting with us right now. People may be sitting in churches. They are listening to the same preacher. They are listening to the same teaching, but the word is not profiting them because some of them, they are thinking about what they did last night. Some of them are thinking about all sorts of kind of things. They are thinking about all sorts of things. They are not focused on what is being said in the word of God. Hallelujah. So what are these doors? We begin to understand, children of God, that doors are a system of access, number one. Hallelujah. I know that my numbering, you know, sometimes, but number one, just say number one, nevertheless. Doors are systems of access. Doors give you access. They are systems of access. They are not just objects like that you find pinned to a, a, a building. It's not just a wooden door that you just open and unlock and you just come. But they are a system of access. They are, what do they help you access? They help you access opportunities. They help you access levels. They help you to move from one point, point A to B. They, they, they can give you movement. They can either restrict you. They, they control the motion of things. Doors, doors. There are doors. There are portals that you need to move into. That's why even in your prayer life, you need to unlock certain doors that take you to new dimensions of understanding the word, that take you to dimensions of understand or of seeing your prayer life even grow, of things, seeing things. Don't let it be that you are just only hearing of visions from people in church only or your pastor. Also get into the dimension of seeing dreams and God talking to you, visions of God talking to you. Hallelujah, somebody. So doors control motion. They control movement. If, you know, if a door is closed, you cannot move. Hallelujah. Then secondly, we begin to understand that doors can also be a hindrance. Doors will limit your, 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 your movement. It can be a limitation. So a door can be an access door or it can be a hindrance door or a limiting door. Then you begin to understand that when a door limits you, you are now dealing with closed doors. This is the dimension now I, now I want us to talk about. When you get to a closed door, you need to understand why those doors are closed because not all doors that are closed need to be opened again. Some doors are closed for a reason. Let's look at this. Number one, doors open and they close. This is the reality that you must have. A door that was once open can be closed as well. Hallelujah. A door that was once open can also be closed at some point. There is a reason for that. Understand why that door closed. Hallelujah. There is a door that can close. There is a door that can open. Number two, you need to understand that doors can be closed due to circumstances in your life. Situations that arise. Maybe you were dumped. Maybe somebody broke up with you. Maybe somebody did 
divorced you. If that, that door is closed, we need to understand. You know, yesterday they laughed in church when I made an, ex a, 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 an example and I said, listen, if somebody says to you, I don't think I can continue this relationship with you. It's not you, it's me. That is a closed door. You don't need to interrogate it further. You don't need to analyze that word. There's nothing you need to discuss. When somebody says, I'm done with you, I'm done with you. Some of us need to understand that there are doors that close like that. Some of us, we have doors that close. We didn't know why they closed. And, and maybe it was a, a door of a job. But God was protecting you from something. So you, some of us, if certain doors did not close, maybe you would never have been an entrepreneur. You would have never known that you could create your own business. Hallelujah. So we thank God for the closed doors that he purposed to close. But those that were closed by human being interference or whatever kind of uh, things that happened, we ask God to reopen those doors. We ask God for restoration. Hallelujah. So there are some doors that are bad for us that were closed. Hallelujah. So we understand that circumstances, situations, some doors can be closed by spiritual manipulation. So spiritual manipulation can also close certain doors. Some doors can be closed by people. So we begin to understand that doors are not only the objects we talk about, but also human entities. There are people who are doors that we want to, we, you want to go sit on a particular table. You want to be invited to, 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 to certain meetings, but there's somebody that you need to go through so that they can give you access to that door. Hallelujah. That is why in John chapter 10 verse 7, Jesus says, I am the door for the sheep. Hallelujah. And number three, you need to understand that all doors that are closed, they will close or doors will close by default. So by default, every door that is open is meant to close. Hallelujah. No matter the treasure that is inside as human beings, we must understand that doors have to close. That is why you need to take uh, advantage of opportunities fast enough. I'm closing now. Luke chapter 11, verse one to seven says one day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And as, 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 as John taught his disciples, hallelujah. And he said to them, when you pray, say as follows, but verse five is my emphasis, verse five to seven. He says, then Jesus said to them, to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, let me have three loaves of bread. And a friend of mine uh, uh, on a journey has come to me and I have no food to, to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, he says, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. So you will encounter such people who will close doors. Yes, it's your friend. Yes, you knocked on his door. Yes, you thought they were going to open for you. They, you thought they were going to borrow you the money, but you will get a no. It's a closed door. So Jesus shows the example. He says, such things happen. You may wake the person up. So some doors are closed because of what? Of time. The timing is wrong. The timing is wrong. So the doors close because the timing is wrong. Thank you for those that are sharing the broadcast on TikTok. I see you. Pastor Likalakala, thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. So doors close because it's the wrong timing. You came at the wrong timing. And the Bible shows us an example with the parable of the 10 virgins, where the other virgins went to go buy oil because they were not prepared. But when they came back, the door was closed. So you may have the right goods, you may, you may have the CV, you may have the qualification, but maybe you didn't, it's, it, it's not a door that is meant for you. So they had the oil, but the door was closed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. You can read about the story on, on, on Matthew chapter 25, verse 8 to 10. So doors are closed until permission is granted. We need to understand that doors grant permission. Until permission is granted, certain doors will remain closed. Hallelujah. And not all closed doors are bad. Hallelujah. They are there to manage and restrict certain things. Number two, you need to understand as well that closed and sealed doors, they can be there or closed to increase your value. They increase the value of the product. That is why the secret to making Coca-Cola remains a secret. The secret of Coca-Cola is not known. It's kept under lock and key. It's only known by certain executives. Hallelujah. So God is preserving some of us and keeping us under closed doors. I'm closing with this scripture. And this is my true last closing. Second Kings chapter four, verse two to three says, the prophet Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? 
tell me what do you have of value in the house? She said, your maiden servant has nothing in the house except a small jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow containers from all your neighbors and empty the containers, not just a few. Then you shall go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour it um, into all the containers and you shall set aside one when it is full. But I love what, what, what the prophet says in verse four here. He says, Go and get the oil and when you come back, shut the door. Some of us need to learn to shut the doors behind us because some of us, we bring people prematurely into the dreams and the things that God has called us for. Your intellectual property is your intellectual property. Some of you need to keep quiet the plans that you're working on and the dreams that you're working on. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Because God wants to cook that thing inside in, in the house with you. He wants to make sure that he then increases you. Amen, somebody. Amen. So doors are there to protect us and to preserve us. Hallelujah. They are there to protect us and preserve us. I think we'll continue about the protection and preservation of doors tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll meet up again on um, at 10 o'clock again in the evening. I pray that this word that I've shared today and the teachings are, are, are making a difference. I would love to hear from you. Please comment. If you want to be added into the WhatsApp group, please inbox on facebook on on tiktok let's talk let's talk and win amen amen somebody i want you to type in the comment section tell your neighbor go forward go forward go forward let me see if the people are still here what before we close go forward it's time for us to go forward it is time for us to go forward amen somebody hallelujah let's just begin to thank god for the word father we thank you holy spirit we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word that has gone forth today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that we will keep your revelation word in us. Father, thank you, God, for sending a word that is for our season that we need to move to the next dimension. Thank you, Lord, that we will keep your word inside of us, that in our moments of weakness, in our moments of weak strength, Father God, you will remember us, Father God, and elevate us and open doors that no man can shut. Thank you, Lord, for closing those doors that the enemy had opened that thought he thought he would put us into. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the strength that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for your word of healing, and we declare it over somebody who who's going through right now, who needs that healing in the body, my God, that by your stripes they are healed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that somebody who's listening to me right now is receiving the light of the word for their situation, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, they are receiving answers to the questions they have, the decisions they need to make so that they make the decision to go into your into your door, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that they will begin to experience your their new creation creation status, Father God, that you have given them. Thank you, Lord, for delivering us from the powers of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we will sleep and wake up with the assurance that greater is he that is in us and th than those who are in the world. Thank you, Lord, that we, we, we close this broadcast with the knowledge and the assurance, Father God, that the doors that you have opened for us are doors of greatness, doors of notability, doors of impact doors of unmerited favor, doors of grace that you are going to encompass us in my God. You're going to envelope us in the grace anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that dwells in us, that continues to give us counsel. Thank you, Lord, that you continually teach us so that we don't miss our way, Father God. We will not miss the mark anymore, my God. As we say goodbye to February, Father God, we open Open up new doors in February, Father God. The doors of signs and wonders, the doors of divine health. Father God, meet that person at the point of their need right now that needs divine health. Father God, thank you for open doors, open financial doors, Father God. We know, Father God, we are not beggars, Father God. We are not meant to be enslaved by begging, Father God, or by borrowing, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, bring us into the, the, the land of 
milk and honey, Father God, so that we have the credentials to look good, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for satisfying us early, even in our youth, God, so that we are not looked upon as people who are just nobodies and non-entities. We are not hobos, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, because we show the cabot of God. Father God, let your glory shine in us, Father God. Turn our stories into glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us be able to be testifying, Father God, and tell us, uh, tell others the message, God, that will show them that our God is alive. Our God is alive. My God is alive. My God is opening up doors of interviews for people right now. Those of you who are believing God for a job, begin to thank God for that job right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may you receive calls from people that you did not even apply to. You won't know how your CV got there, but they will call you. That door will open in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for doors of restoration when it comes to marriages, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, those marriages that they thought were broken, Father God, thank you for restoration. Thank you for bringing them together in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we will continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you, my God. Increase our faith, Father God, so that our visuals do not frustrate us, do not slow us down, Mudimwaka. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, that you have elevated us to be heads, my God. Thank you, Lord, that we are not walking in the tail anointing, Mudimwaka. I exalt you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for liberation for those who are oppressed by demonic oppressions, Mudimwaka. Mudimwaka, Kiaoleboha. Lord, we are meant for the mountaintop life, Lord. We are meant for the mountaintop life, my God. Thank you, Lord, for releasing us into that mountaintop life, Father God. Mudimwaka, we have held on to you. We are saying against all odds, Mudimwaka. Against all odds, Mudimwaka. Our expectations will not be cut off, Mudimwaka. We will be resurrecting our dreams, Mudimwaka. And we will be resurrecting our hopes, Mudimwaka because that you are bringing those babies into, in, into full time, Mudimwaka. We will not abort any babies. We will not miscarry any babies. Mudimwaka will give birth to our destinies, Mudimwaka. In this year, 2023, Mudimwaka, satisfy us early. Release, 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 Mudimwaka, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare and we decree, Mudimwaka, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, Mudimwaka. Give somebody strength, Mudimwaka, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He can do all things, Mudimwaka, all things, Mudimwaka, even when they were feeling like they're falling short, even when they were thinking that, oh my God, I can't take the next breath. Take that next breath, child of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are said, I command you to come out of that depression in the name of Jesus. I command sadness to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to declare and decree the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the name of Jesus, may God richly supply you with all the needs that you have. God, supply those needs, Mudimwaka. Fill those pantries. Fill those fridges. Make sure their children are fed, Mudimwaka. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, you said it is by the riches in glory that are in Christ Jesus. Mudimwaka, we chose you because you told us that we will not lack any good thing. You told us that when we leave the past behind, Mudimwaka, we move into the rich dimension, Mudimwaka. Father God, we are not only talking about material riches, but Mudimwaka, we are unlocking destiny of a new dimension in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Thank you, Mudimwaka, that everyone who's listening to the sound of my voice, Mudimwaka, is living under your supernatural protection. I speak to those who are traveling right now, those who are changing countries, my God, those who are going home right now, who are driving to work or coming back from work as they sleep tonight, my God. I speak supernatural protection in the mighty 
mighty name of Jesus. Yes, oh God, they will live under supernatural protection. In the mighty name of Jesus, God has great plans for you, child of God. Be filled with the hope and knowing that Mudimu has great plans for you. Nyangbongangulungulu somanda. Niti you are exalted. Mautumiso ngosiyami ezinjinze. Tu mautunyiso ngosiyami emisebenzinye. Tu mautunyiso ngosiyami nekonke lapa in our businesses everywhere, Lord. Let the praises go up. Let the praises go up. We lift up those praises. Begin to lift up those praises right now. Lift up those praises. Thank you, God. Let the blessings and the showers come down right now from wherever you are. In your house, in your car, wherever you are. Let the blessings come down. Remember who you are. You are a child of God. Somebody shout amen. Remember who you are. You are a child of God. God is for you. Who can be against you? You are a child of God. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Did you hear what I said? I said nothing can separate you from the love of God. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. Facebook, are you hearing me? I said the Lord is your shepherd. Cast all your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. Give and receive a good measure. It is your season, child of God. You will be a lender and not a borrower. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes, oh God, he who has begun a good work in you is faithful enough to make sure that he brings you into that perfection. He will make sure in your precious, in your prayers and your supplications, make all your requests known. He will make sure that you will lack no good thing. Be anxious for nothing, child of God. Make your requests made known to God. And I pray for you right now as we part ways that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, all comprehension will guard your heart and your mind in the mighty name of Christ Jesus and the church of God said amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom saints. Let's meet again tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the evening, South African time. Please make sure you get to know what is your season. I, I, where I am now, I don't even think I'll be able to stop, but let me stop for the sake of all of you. I want to preserve your data and we see tomorrow. I love you. I love you. I bless you. God is for you. God is for you. God is doing something. The presence of the Lord is so strong right now. God is for you. God is for you. Don't miss tomorrow. Let's make sure that we transition into the month of February like never before. Blessings. Amen, somebody. Hey, TikTok. Love you so much. I miss you with you. Sister Mantha, I love you. Thelma, you are blessed. Daisy, you are blessed. Amen, amen. You are blessed. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Guys, remember to give Apostle a follow. I'm also on Facebook if you would like to follow me, Coaching L Online. And um, if you want to subscribe and be a blessing to the ministry, you're welcome. I think there's a subscription button at the top as well. If you want to get in touch with the ministry, want to get in touch with me, um, 0815747274, 0815747274, South Africa code. Blessing. Love you, Daisy. You are blessed. You are lifted. Amelia, you are lifted in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye, guys.